in this movie, we're going to be building a UI element that I'm going to call hover tabs. Now, this is a particularly unusual case, but I built it that way to give you a challenge. We're going to be using the hover tabs.html file in your working files folder. The purpose of this lesson is to show you how to use some of the tools in this toolbox. When you walk away from this course, hopefully a lot of the things we cover will be sticking in your brain. But more importantly than just remembering what we did and how we did it, it's the creativity that's most important. It's the knowing what the tools are in your toolbox, knowing how roughly to use them, what they generally do, and then shoving them together in bizarre and interesting ways to come up with interesting techniques. That's what we're going to do in this lesson. Now, if we look at the HTML, it's relatively simple. We have an unordered list with a class of tabs, a bunch of list items with classes of tab, the singular, and then we have two divs, one with a class of tab name and one with a class of tab content. This repeats for all three tabs. Now, when we're building this, we're not gonna use any JavaScript at all. It's all going to be entirely CSS. Let's take a look at the CSS we have so far. Tabs is the entire thing, the UL that surrounds all of these tabs. It has a nice light gray border. It has a width of 400 pixels. You can change that to be larger since you probably have a larger screen than me right now. It has a margin of zero auto that centers it and it has a padding of zero pixels. That gets rid of the indentation effect you get with ULs. Lastly, by setting list style none, we get rid of the bullets in the bulleted list. We're not using the unordered list for a bulleted list, of course. We're using it to keep track of a number of tab elements. Let's take a look at those tab elements. They're LI elements with a class of tab. They have a border of one pixel solid black, so you can see them. And they also have a margin bottom of 10 pixels. Generally in CSS, this is a good way to space out elements. If you want to space them out horizontally, you could say margin right 10 pixels or margin left 10 pixels. That just keeps the elements a little bit away from each other. Now, functionally, if we remove this, everything's the same. But there's a little bit of gunkiness in here. It's not very easy to see what's going on. And so because we're developing, we'd like to make it easier to see what's going on. So I added that margin bottom of 10 pixels. The tab name has this light green color and the tab content has this light red color. Now to start this off, we're going to make this content not visible unless you're hovering over the tab one or tab two or tab three names. Here in tab content, we're gonna say display none. By setting it to display none, it's not going to display by default. Now you'll notice every one of our tabs is a lot smaller because there's no content filling it up. So we can say dot tab colon hover do something. But we don't want to target the tab. We want the tab content to come back when we hover over the tab. So we say dot tab hover when we hover over the tab dot tab content, the thing we're targeting, display block. If I save that and refresh, you'll notice that when I hover over tab one, the content comes back. When I hover over tab two, the content comes back. Tab three, same thing. Now, the bad thing about this particular implementation is that if I hover over tab two and then I move all the way down to tab three, as soon as I hover over tab three, it works for a split second, but then I'm no longer hovering over tab three because tab three has less content. In other words, when I'm hovering over tab two, tab three starts right here. If you'd like to, you can put your finger on the screen where my mouse cursor is. When I go up to tab three, you'll notice it doesn't come down far enough. If the mouse cursor is where your finger is, I'm no longer on tab three, so it collapses. For that reason, this kind of a hover tab interface is a little bit janky and strange. Now in this exercise, we're gonna go all out and build something pretty complicated. So I'm gonna end this movie here, and in the next movie, we'll go ahead and dive right in.